So a few years ago, I was lucky enough to teach the book, Things Fall Apart, in my high school English class. And I, I was lucky for a very specific reason. The book is great by Chinua Achebe, but I was lucky because it connected to a personal experience that I had. I had recently been to South Africa and Swaziland on two separate occasions. And each time I was there, I learned so much from the people there. And I finally had a book that related to some of my experiences. And so we talk about this a lot with literature and books and really anything that there's windows, mirrors, and sliding doors. Each day in class, I had another story to tell my students. And when we missed a day of storytelling in class, they all eagerly asked for me to tell another story about some of my experiences that connected to what we're reading in the book. And they always said, are we gonna hear some stories today or are we just gonna have another regular class, Mr. J? You know, that comment opened up my eyes to the powers of stories in the classroom. I always told stories, but now I was thinking about how I could use it as a serious teaching tool. My students wanted to hear about my experiences because they connected to those stories. And as we read through the book, and discussed Akankwo, who's the main character, and his motivations and actions, there was a deeper understanding taking place. Soon, we were all sharing stories that related to the book. Akankwo had wanted to be a different man than his father was, right? And he wanted to create his own path, and now his son wanted to be a different man than he was. And so young men and women in my class spoke about the pressures they put on themselves to live up to their parents, to be different than their parents. And we began to relate to all these deeper conflicts in this book because our stories connect with them as well. You know I'm a big believer in project-based learning and inquiry-based learning and design thinking, but there's something special about story-driven learning. My students ended up scoring better on their assessments and projects for that Things Fall Apart unit than any other book I'd ever taught. From that moment on, I realized that there had to be something to the power of story. So you may be like me and know that there's something seriously powerful about stories because you've experienced it in your own life and the science and research actually backs that up too. Every night before my boys go to bed, I would tell them a story, right? Sometimes it was based on the day's events. Sometimes it was a story from my own life. Sometimes it was just a, a made up story. But as a child, they were completely wrapped into it. They remembered the details. If I told the same story twice, even if it was months or even a year, they would remind me that I had already told that story. And if I hit on a similar theme or topic, they would call me on it. They would know if I talked about it before uh, or if it sounded close to another story. My boys would also relate those bedtime stories to real events that happen. And many of the same themes and topics that come up in our stories will come up in their lives. Well, it's not unique at all to my kids. Uh, instead, it's, it's based on science and research. A 2010 study in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences showed a very intimate connection between the brain activity of the speakers and listeners in conversation, demonstrating how the brain of engaged listeners syncs up with a speaker. And by engaging students with compelling stories that impart important material, teachers can reach students both emotionally and biochemically increasing the potential for rich learning experiences. That's what that study found out. And Cheryl Walker, who's a teacher, administrator, professor for 30 years, she wrote about the science behind stories. And here's what she said. Scientists have long known that human beings are storytelling creatures. For centuries, we have told stories to transmit information, share histories, teach important lessons. While stories have a profound effect on us due to emotional content, recent research also shows that our brains are actually hardwired 
to seek out a coherent narrative structure in the stories we hear and tell. This structure helps us absorb the information in a story and connect it with other experiences that we have around the world. So if you're like me or maybe, you know, someone who's either been on the receiving end or the telling end of these stories, maybe it's starting to make sense. I know that I learn best through experiences and stories. I think back on some of the best learning experiences that I had, and they were having to do with hearing a great story or creating a new story. And when I look at what articles I enjoy or videos or podcasts, they're always teaching me through a story. That's the initial hook of many great learning experiences. But yet, in our kind of techno-focused, artificial intelligence is here, taking over everything world, sometimes we fail to take the time to teach through stories. I'm guilty of this, completely guilty of this, and you might be too. But I actually think that technology and the incoming artificial intelligence wave is gonna be a great tool for storytelling in different ways. It's not going to be able to replace it in the same way that can replace some of the things we're talking about, but I think it can enhance in all different types of ways. The human element you can never take from providing that story and connecting, but there's so many possibilities for story-driven learning. Think about what Pamela Rutledge, who's a professor and director of Media Psychology Research Center, in an article she wrote for Psychology Today, here's what she says. Even with technology's increasingly sophisticated and jaw-dropping capabilities, and we've seen this with artificial intelligence, the tools are becoming simultaneously more accessible and user-friendly. So much so that the boundaries are blurring not just across technologies, but also across the people who are creating, using, producing, augmenting, distributing, hacking, mashing up in every other ing imaginable. In spite of all this excitement, however, the human brain has been on a slower evolutionary trajectory than the technology. It's an interesting piece here. She says, our brains still respond to content by looking for a story and making sense out of that experience. No matter what the technology, artificial intelligence included, the meaning starts in the brain. So the research has shown that stories fuel understanding for all different types of learning objectives, right? If you want your students to understand mathematical principles, write better essays, learn through inquiry, apply scientific theories or concepts, tackle real world issues, innovate in the classroom or out in the real world, then you gotta teach with stories. Leo um, Weidrick, who's the co-founder of Buffer, he wrote a fantastic article on the science behind storytelling. And he explains that our brains can't help but function differently when we're being told a story. When we're being told a story, things in our brains change dramatically, is what he says. Not only are the language processing parts of our brain activated, but any other area of our brain that would use when we're experiencing the events of the story are too, and yet it gets better. When we tell stories to others that have really helped shape our thinking and way of life, we have the same effect on them too. The brains of the person telling the story and listening to it can synchronize. As I mentioned earlier, says Yuri Hasen from Princeton, when the woman spoke English, this is an example that he gave, when the woman spoke English, the volunteers understood her story and their brains synchronized. When she activity in her insula, an emotional brain region, the listeners did too. When her frontal cortex lit up, so did theirs. By simply telling a story, the woman could plant ideas, thoughts, and emotions into the listener's brains. Anything you've experienced, you can get others to experience the same, or at least get their brain areas to be activated in the same way yours was activated when you experienced the said story. So what does this mean for our teachers, our students? What does this mean for teaching and learning? I think first it means we have to rethink some of the you know best practices on instruction. Stories are often told in history, language arts classes, 
but are they used effectively? And are we ever thinking about teaching with stories in STEM subjects? Uh, my co-author of Launch and Empower, John Spencer, wrote an amazing book called Wendell the World's Worst Wizard. And the book is basically teaching kids STEM through the story of Wendell. It's making those STEM concepts come alive and connect to it because it's written in story form. Second, I'd argue that one of the most innovative ways to teach actually may be just to slow down and tell a story. Figuring out what story to tell, how it connects is the job of any great teacher or mentor. If we want our students to go out there and change the world, we'll need some inspiration from the stories of those that have already changed the world. Finally, I think books like Kendall Haven's Story Proof need to be must reads for anyone teaching anything. You know, his book explores 150 qualitative and quantitative research studies that discuss the effectiveness of storytelling on learning. Let's use the research that we have to improve how we teach. And how does artificial intelligence and the incoming increase in technology impact all of this? I think in two ways. Number one, there's gonna be all kinds of new and unique stories that are created with this technology. And number two, people are going to want human experiences more and more and they want to know that they're human experiences. It's why concerts sell out, even though we can listen to the music on our AirPods. It's why sporting events sell out, even though we can watch it on the TV. We want that human connection. We want the meaning, the social, the human, the language-based connection, and we want to be a part of that story. So if you're thinking of new and innovative ways to get your kids ready for learning and to connect and tap into their kind of brain of learning there and to make it start to happen, stories are often the best way to make that happen.